the session and we will not be having a um, uh, continued closed session afterwards. So, um, so any changes to the agenda for the regular session? Uh, no, actually, President, no. There's no changes. Um, do we need to take roll? Oh, yes, take roll, please. Okay, President Hill. Present. Vice President Ackman. Here. Director Falls. Here. Director Mayhood has left. So we will need to excuse her, is that correct? Yes, she should be excused. Uh, she has a family health emergency. Yes. And so do we have a motion? To and I'm here also. Pardon? I said oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Mark Smalley. Yeah. Right, okay. Yes, I uh, motion that uh, Gail Mayhood be excused from this Second. Meeting. All in favor? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay, moving on, changes to the agenda. Um, so no president, no changes. Okay. Oral communications, this portion of the agenda is a reserve for oral communications by the public on any subject that lies within the jurisdiction of the district and is not on the agenda. Any person may address the board of directors at this time. Normally presentations must not exceed three minutes in length and individuals may speak only once. Please understand that the Brown Act limits what the board can do regarding issues not on the agenda. No action or discussion may occur on issues outside those already listed on today's agenda. Any director may request that a matter raised during oral communications be placed on a future agenda. Do we have anyone that wishes to speak? Mr. Holloway. I'm Bruce Holloway from Boulder Creek. Um, went to the administration meeting yesterday. The only item on the agenda was the board policy manual. So of all the things that the board does, of all the policies that the board sets, I think that the board policy manual is one particular thing that is of the board, by the board, for the board. Uh, so I think it's pointless to assign the board policy manual to a committee. And that committee meeting didn't work very well. The chair didn't show up, general manager walked out. So one of the things in the board policy manual is it says if, if you're not gonna make a meeting, you're supposed to inform the district secretary. And these days, all that takes is about 15 seconds to send a text. So I don't understand. I don't understand why the chair um, of the committee didn't simply inform the district secretary because there was a room full of people here waiting to get the meeting started. Um, but I, I think if it was it turned out to be a pointless meeting, I think it will continue to be pointless to have the board policy manual discussed in the committee. So I think you need to bring it back to the board whatever it is you need to change in that manual. It used to be fairly intelligible, maybe 15 or 20 pages. It used to be a good introduction for a new board member, but uh, it looks like pretty much a hacked up mess right now. It has a lot of inaccuracies in it. Uh, I think you ought to take it up every meeting until you, you can put it to bed. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Holloway. Anyone else? Seeing no other commenters, do we have anyone online? No, we don't. I do not see anyone online that wants to speak. So moving on to unfinished business, amended and restated agreement for professional services with Rap Tellus. <coughs> President, um, so we have, um, you could show her on screen and promote um, Heather. We'll present the item. Okay. Good, good evening, board. Um, the item before you is an amended and restated agreement for our professional services with RAF TELUS for the completion of the 2023 rate study. Um, this item was brought to you a couple meetings ago, and the board requested additional information. Um, since then, the request. Um, the request actually increased in amount, and the additional request is $20,085, an increase to $119,120, 
Um, there is actually still work being done um, and there is still room in the contract for, for this work and it's related to the wholesale intertie rates. Um, the district will only be billed for the actual time spent, not necessarily the whole contract if, if the um, entire contract is, is actually not used. So, um, and the additional um, change to the agreement is an extension to September 30th, 2024. It is an amended and restated agreement because it has expired. And that concludes my report tonight. Um, if you could, Heather, could you also speak to some of the, the follow-up? Um, we had certain items that the board had asked that we check on that were, um, uh, sorry, deliverables, and you followed up on that. Could you speak to I, that? I did. Um, I, um, there was a question about the amount of meetings that Raft Telus participated in. In the end, they participated in a total of 23 staff meetings, one committee meeting, and seven board meetings, where in the original proposal, it was about five meetings. So, and then also requested was um, a detail of the additional fees in a proposal format that was included in the report. And then also, um, requested was whether they provided um, the, um, the budgeting workshop, excuse me, worksheet. They did provide that worksheet to staff for, for future studies and um, analysis. And then they have also provided the suggestions on the layout of the utility bill. And so they have completed all of the requirements per the contract. There was questions about that at the last meeting when this item was discussed. Thank you, Heather. So I also wanted to add that there is a little room in there. We still haven't finished their, um, the um, wholesale intertie rates. It's something we want to do, but we need this contract, of course, to get Rep tell us to work on that. But I wanted a little bit of extra to take care of that and maybe look at um, some other kind of special case scenarios. But in addition to that, we'll, we'll probably end up coming back to you with another one because I'd like to also look at our connection fees right now too. Like it's a good time to look at them, have them align with the new rate study. So, but that's all I want to add there. And um, yeah, we need the contract so we can get them going on the rest of it. Okay, um, do we have any questions from the board? I have a comment on it. Um, I appreciate the additional information that in particular Raf Telus was able to provide. Um, what they provided clarified uh, questions that I had previously. So thank you for being able to get that information from them. Any other questions from the board? Do we have a motion to uh, accept this? I will move that we accept the recommendation to direct the interim general manager to enter into an amended and restated agreement with Raf Tellus in an amount not to exceed $119,120 for the completion of the 2023 rate study and authorizes the interim general manager to execute extensions and or non-substantive modifications to the agreement as necessary. I'll second that. Okay. Secretary, call the roll. Oh, did I have any public order. comment? Sorry. Yes. Order, public, public, comment. public comments on this issue? Um, I guess I said my name already. I'm Bruce Holloway from Boulder Creek. Um, when, when a board member makes a motion before you've heard from the public, I think that's a slap in the face at the public. I don't think you should make a motion until you've heard, the, heard from everyone. Uh, so I know you, board has a chance to comment first and then go to the public. Um, and I don't know where this, where this practice started of saying, let's have a motion before we go to the public, but it is 
really inappropriate. Um, so last month. So I'll um, apologize for that. That was my error. Well. And he just wants to complain about me. That's okay. Me. Yes. I called for it though. I think so. Whatever. The only complaint I have about you, Director Atkins, is here at the show. And you didn't inform the district secretary, so you let the whole room full of people waiting. Um, so last month, Director Mayhood pushed back on this draft sales contract because uh, she wanted the authorization. And now it's come back and it's $5,000 more. So that went well, didn't it? Um, one thing I noticed in the itemization is there's a big lump about 5,000 bucks for expenses. I don't know what those expenses were. There's no itemization of the $5,000. Um, so I had my doubts about that. I'm sorry that the district is talking to Raph Ellis about wholesale prices at all. I don't think they have much to add. I think they already got off to a terrible start with their distinguishing characteristics memo, which was utterly baseless. Um, so I don't think they're doing that well. Uh, I do think you need to investigate the connection fees, but I don't think Raph Ellis is necessarily the best ones to do it. And I don't even think you need a consultant to look at the connection fees. I think if you look at the, the last report that was done on connection fees in 2017, um, they give you a pretty good uh, a pretty good summary of how they did the calculation. And I think somebody could redo that calculation close enough uh, that you can change the connection fees without hiring an expensive consultant. Um, so I particularly think it's a mistake to be uh, continuing to use them regarding so-called wholesale prices. Um, and I, I also think that those, wholesale, that those prices should not be reduced. There's no reason to reduce the price of water to anybody outside this district. Thank you. Are there any other comments from the public? Please. Hi, I'm Nicole Lonerberridge. I'm with Brackenbury. Um, I just want to put in there, I, I'm not very familiar with everything. Um, I've just heard a little bit. Um, we are um, a organization that just recently connected through an emergency inner tie um, that we had been working with a previous district manager that took several months to do. Um, I just want to make sure that when we look at any type of wholesale um, pricing, that there are people who are in the sphere of influence who have been paying um, property taxes and that we shouldn't be treated as something different than that. So um, when you, I don't know, uh, when you said characteristics, I don't know if you're speaking of that, but I wanna make sure that when you look at these type of interconnects or you're in a letter of intent working relationship that you hopefully honor those relationships and don't gouge us anymore as we're trying to pay for infrastructure to happen. So. Um, we are not a big basin. We are in an agreement with you and want to work through stuff. And we are in the spirit of influence with SLB. So I just want to make sure whatever contract you enter into and leave the interim manager to negotiate if there is a distinction between us. Thank you. Thank you. Any further comments from the public? Seeing no one online. Okay. Bob? Yeah, I have a short comment. Um, yeah, I won't be voting for this. Uh, Raftelis, in my opinion, failed to deliver the most important piece of information, which is a quantitative justification of the cost associated with tiered rates under current state law. Um, while that state law may change, that is the requirement today. And because of that, I can't support any extensions, and I do not believe that they would be uh, at all helpful to any of the activities we have underway uh, for either wholesale or connection pricing. Any other comments from the board? Okay, now let's call the roll. The vote. President Hill? Yes. Vice President Ackman? Yes. Director Falls? No. Director Smalley? Yes. Motion passes. Okay, now we're on to new business. 
so item 10A, 2021 CIP pipeline replacement project. Um, Eric will uh, present. Um, staff has reviewed five additional change orders for the 2021 CIP pipeline project. This brings the total number of change orders to 21. The total of these five change orders uh, is an additional $73,934. Um, so it, we would ask that the board would approve um, payment to the contractor for these change orders. And with that, I will answer any questions that you might have. Are there comments from the public on this? I have some questions. So I'm not sure what the protocol is, whether we're doing questions here first, then comments public, and then comments back. But I, if you might. Either way. Either way. Okay. I, I, all right. I, I'm willing to be flexible. I appreciate that. I just wasn't sure what the, what the policy was. I, I, I believe it's more important that we get the information communicated than that we are exactly precisely fair, fair plan. So first of all, I want to say that I really, really appreciate the uh, fiscal impact tables that you all are putting together. To me, um, the bottom line number is, is the one that I'm looking for, right? And so that's the combination of the initial uh, contract and then whatever change orders come along. And I understand that there may be multiple uh, parts of that. Um, you know, as we talked about before, kind of looking at that 10 to 15 percent range, try to keep it in there. And I know, Garrett, um, over the course of your time here, you're going to become Dr. No when it comes to change orders. And, and that's part of the role that you have is to make sure that we're getting the right uh, value for the money that we're spending. I didn't have any specific questions on the amounts. I had questions that go more to general issues. So the fire hydrant one, which is a really big number, I mean, relatively speaking on the amount, it's almost a third of the amount. Are we looking at this kind of issue with all of our fire hydrants where those connections are possibly poor and could they fail in times of stress when the fire hydrant was being used? I'm not aware that we are checking all the fire hydrant connections. This was a particular issue where the plans call to reconnect the existing hydrant. Yeah. Typically, we would provide a brand new hydrant. Okay. And so when we went to connect the existing hydrant, it just made sense to replace the bolts and the gaskets. Okay. So maybe going forward, that would be a standard thing we do then, just new hydrants, <laughs> unless they're really new already, but our stuff is old. Um, it would be my preference to have new hydrants. Okay, fair enough. All right. Um, in terms of the location of the meters, it, did they put them in the location they were supposed to according to the plan? They did. Okay, I guess that, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, in terms of the valve abandonment one, did the inventory we took a couple of years ago, did that include relative age of the components that we were surveying? I'm not aware of the inventory. No, that's the water master plan where we put together all the inventory of pipes and sizes and all that sort of thing. Um, I mean, I could look into the master plan and see if that information is there, but I'm not aware of that okay. at this time. It was one of the items that in the metadata associated with the inventory I would had requested. I was just curious if that happened. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Sammy, any questions? How close are we to wrapping this up? Okay, so we have a concrete pour scheduled for one o'clock tomorrow at the uh, Blue Ridge tank site. Um, we will have the perimeter fencing around the tank installed the first week of May. We still have to do the paving. So we have paving to do at three of the pipeline sites, but I anticipate everything will be done by the middle of June. Awesome. So is there... Um... Do, do these change orders capture what we think is the likely universe of all other things that may be unanticipated? I'm just curious if we, you know, I ask because I'm just wondering if like there's a process that we need to think about for how we handle these so that you're not feeling like, you know, you have to come back so frequently on one project. The contractor has submitted a total of 26 change orders to date. 
So staff has reviewed and made recommendations for 21 of those change orders. Those remaining five change orders, we're still in negotiation. Staff is seeking to deny these change orders. So okay. that so those may be, come if those end up in negotiations being agreed to. It's possible. Got it. Okay. Mark. Package looks good to me. I don't have any questions on this. Thank you. Okay, I have an observation here on this, um, which is not really a question, but um, when I look at this set of change orders and the rest of them included, um, it makes me think that perhaps uh, it would be economical for us to have some additional staff in engineering to make sure that we are able to uh, anticipate more of these issues and have uh, fewer change orders if that might be possible with having some additional engineering staff. Um, we're, we're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on change orders and uh, adding a, an engineer to double check a lot of this might help quite a bit. So that's an observation only. Okay. Okay. Then I'd like to make the motion. Uh, Any comments from the public on this? I had a question about the fire hydrants. I think the fire districts uh, need to check the hydrants periodically, like every year or something like that. Uh, so, for example, there's a fire hydrant, a new fire hydrant that I've noticed on the other side of the bridge over here on Irwin Way. And when I went by there the other day, I saw a fire command vehicle there. So I kind of got the feeling he was checking out the hydrant in some way. Uh, so I'm just wondering about the handoff. Is there a point when the water district says this hydrant is, uh, is, is operational and then the fire district is responsible for checking it after that? Or, they, I mean, they must know where all the fire hydrants are somehow. So is there a handoff between the, the water district and the fire district? Uh, that's one of my questions. Um, and I guess I have an observation too. When I went to the last finance committee meeting, I think there were change orders on the agenda. Um, and President Hill started talking about associate engineer. And I think by the end of the conversation, um, I was saying, well, that's kind of off topic. So I made the observation at the finance committee meeting that talking about a new engineer is on top of relative to these change orders. You are the board president. You can put any item on the agenda that you choose to. So with my understanding of the Brown Act, I think the right thing for you to do is to put that item on an agenda and, and not keep talking about it when there's other items. You know, that's they're supposed to stay on top of it. And you have you have complete control of the agenda. So please add that as an item. Thank you for your comment. Do we have a motion? To I'll make the motion uh, that the board directs the interim general manager to execute uh, change orders um, 17, 18, 19, and 20 for payment to GMB construction. 21 also. Um, 20 and 21. And 21 yeah. for the 2021 CIP pipeline project in the sum of $73,934, increasing the not to exceed amount from uh, 5143 143 to 5217 um, at $77, and authorize the general interim general manager to execute non substantive modifications as necessary. I'll second that. President Hill? Yes. Vice President Ackman? Yes. Director Falls? Yes. D um, Director Smalley? Yes. Okay, next we have the Anderson Pacific CIP project. So, President, that um, Garrett's going to also present that Thank item. You. Thank you. So, 
This memo is in regards to the Alta Via pipeline replacement project and the Monin Way retaining wall. This was brought to the board and some comments were made about finding alternative means and maybe a different solution. Staff has reached out and gotten additional pricing for the wall. We have explored alternative solutions. This is the most economical solution to deal with the failing roadway. The other prices we got were close to the price that from our contractor who's on the site. So it makes the most sense to proceed with the contractor we have at the site to build this wall as quickly as possible so that we can finish the project and complete the paving. <clears throat> and with that, I'll take any questions that you have. Question, you know, I'll add something that's just, um, sorry. I just wanted to add, I mean, essentially, I know that we got the quote from the contractors. We did go out, look at, get two other prices. And when we kind of, scrutinized one of the contractors it's like well do you understand prevailing wage and all the requirements of the contract all of a sudden their price of maybe it was fifty thousand lower I, I don't remember the exact numbers but it was substantially lower and we're like good and then no once we caught you know once it comes down to like yes you're going to pay prevailing wage you meet all these requirements and the insurance you have to carry the prices were just too close to really want to bother mm -hmm. um at this point, I think it. I think that we kind of have to bite the bullet and put the retaining wall there because not doing so would be quite egregious on our part. It just it's unfortunate we weren't there. Staff, the current staff wasn't there. Blow by blow, maybe say stop and look at a different way to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Right now, we played it over some problem temporarily and you've got a ditch in the road it's supported by an i-beam and a steel plate and i don't know i'm you know it makes me a little nervous to think that the amazon person's going up that road periodically and so on and so forth so that's just my pitch on it too well i believe we discussed this in the engineering uh, committee meeting last year when it first came up and for background, this is actually, I believe, on a private road, right? Correct. This is not a county road. This is a private road. By rights, the people on the road would be the ones maintaining the road. But because none of that, is my understanding, none of that was done prior to execution of the contract and construction, we're now faced with a situation where we're effectively, it's a, a gift of of public funds to private individuals here, but doing it because we need to protect our pipeline mm -hmm. and to protect ourselves from possible litigation, presumably if the road uh, failed. It's not a great situation. This is the kind of thing that from a policy point of view, I like to talk about in the board meeting because I wanna make sure, and it sounds like you guys are very well uh, attuned to this, that going forward we do if we can't fix what was in the past, you guys weren't here, but going forward, when we get to private roads, let's make sure that we are very cognizant of what that means um, and who's responsible for taking care of it. And if there is any possibility of this same kind of thing happening, that we deal with it up front. Um, I, I don't see that we have a whole lot of choice here either. Um, I, I guess I would like to hear from legal counsel if to make sure this isn't a, a gift of public uh, a gift of public funds to private individuals um because the district has an interest in protecting its property and ensuring that the infrastructure under the road is safe this would not be a gift of public funds um a gift of public funds would mean that the district does not have a benefit or any uh interest in um, the expenditure. And so here, uh, I think that in my discussions with Brian, there is 
sufficient evidence that the infrastructure um, is potentially compromised by not moving forward with this project. Thank you for the clarification. You're welcome. Other comments from the board? Um, when we discussed this at the engineering committee meeting and when we discussed this at the previous board meetings, um, I expressed uh, the same angst that uh, Director Fultz just did. Uh, I have heartache over this one. However, I don't see that we have a choice. We went in there. We did work. We've got to fix it. So begrudgingly, that's where we are. Brian, I appreciate your comment also that um, if you had been here prior to us starting this work, maybe you would have been scratching your head about a different way to do it. Thank you. That's that's what I think is appropriate. Yeah, but you weren't here then. So. Do we have comments from the public on this issue? Okay. Uh, motion? Yes. Um, I move that the uh, let's see, my own the right one. Yes, I move that the board authorize the interim general manager to approve the contract uh, change orders uh, ten and eleven for payment to Anderson Pacific. Uh, this this is change order four. Am I on the? Uh, okay. Um, yes, it's change order four. After. Yes. Here. Nope, I'm reading the wrong one. Here, sorry. Um, authorizes the interim general manager to approve uh, contract change order four for payment to Anderson Pacific Engineering um, for the Alta Via pipeline replacement project in the sum of uh, two hundred five and nine hundred dollars, increasing the not to exceed amount from uh, two million five hundred. Sixty-nine thousand seven ninety-seven to two million seven hundred seventy-five thousand eight seventy-nine. I'll second that. President Hill. Yes. Vice President Ackman. Yes. Director Coles. Yes. Director Smalley. Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Next change order. Okay. Um, again, on Alta Via Pipeline Replacement Project, change orders 10 and 11. Yes. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Um, staff has reviewed change orders 10 and 11 for payment to Anderson Pacific for the Alta Via Pipeline Project. This has to do with water service extensions. The old water main was located on the ridge above the road. The new pipeline project establishes the pipeline in the right of way and the meters in the right of way are at the front of the property. So for this reason, we had to reconnect the individual houses to the meter. Typically, it would be a customer responsibility. But since the district had relocated the main to the right of way, we accepted a, a time and materials change order to connect the customers to the new water line of the meter. Change order 11 is the steel plate rental at the failed, road, uh, failed roadway. Um, so we have ongoing costs while we wait to put in the retain wall. With that, I'll take any questions you have. Do we have any comments from the public on this? Seeing none, anybody online? Uh, I have a question. I'll have the board. Okay. Did comments from the board? Questions? Um, so we were doing work on the private residence property. Correct. Okay. Um, because we're moving the meters out of the right of way? Some of the meters were located in their backyards. Yeah. The pipeline was on the ridge, so it made sense to have the meter in the backyard. If we had a break or something, we'd have to send staff to go fix it through their yards. So going forward, we want to establish our mains in the right of way in the road and the meter in the right of way or in the front of the house. Right. So it's easy to locate. 
And for that reason, we have to reconnect to the house's plumbing through the private property. We contacted each individual homeowner were, that were affected and coordinated with them to ensure that, you know, we didn't cause any problems with their leach fields or septic tanks or anything that they didn't want done and so that they would be in water. So it sounds to me like this was done for our convenience, really. The, the yes, it was done. Director Fultz? Okay, but our policy is from the meter to the home is, is the customer's responsibility. How, how many uh, homes were we looking at here? I, I counted 15. 15, so roughly, um, what, eight grand? More or less seven grand per home. Yes. Understand that it's a, a huge, a huge burden, particularly for people that lost their lost their homes. I think that was some of the rationale here. And it isn't necessarily that the board wouldn't have made that decision beforehand. What really I'm very concerned about is the notion of uh, staff committing uh, public funds in this amount um, three times, at least three times over the signature authority prior to getting approval from the board. Um, again, we're faced with a situation where you guys weren't here, but boy, this this is a, um, from a process point of view, this is not the way um, sausage needs to be made, that's for sure. This is a substantial amount of money. Again, I wanna go to um, the attorney from the point of view of a gift of public funds, Given that our policy states from the meter, I don't know that there's, we have any flexibility in that, that the district manager can waive that unilaterally, what have you. Are, are we facing with a gift of public funds here as well? Um, no, it would not be a gift. I mean, this should be looked at more of a, a deviation from a policy in order to um, improve the infrastructure for the convenience of the district. And so the, again, the district has an interest in doing this. Um, I don't believe that the general manager can unilaterally change policy, but that's why it's this in part, this is before you to decide whether you want to make an expenditure toward this effort. Um, it, if you're deviating from the policy, you just have to ensure that you are doing it consistently and that the grounds for a deviation are very clearly stated on the record. And I think that the engineer has done that well here. Well, I mean, the grounds for deviating it was we want to put it in the right of way, which is the policy. Um, but it's not the policy that we extend it. I don't, how, how does that benefit the district to extend the connection to the person's home? What, what is our benefit? that avoids it being a gift of public funds. My understanding was that it is necessary to uh, perform this extension in order to move the meters to the right of way. May I ask a clarifying question? Yeah, go ahead. So, so these properties, whether they were damaged or destroyed by the fire or not, had pre-existing connections to our water service. The, these are not new connections. We, in the process of moving the location of our water main, recognized that ha connecting to the front of their property, because our water main would now be in a new location, made more sense from an efficiency pers perspective than connecting to the back of their property because of where our new water main was going to be located. Is that accurate? Yeah. And so as a result, we are making this exception because we are requiring the change in the location of their connection by moving our main, not because they, the homeowner, have decided they want to relocate the connection to their main. So that would be, in my view, the reason to deviate from the policy in this manner. And that was, yes, the district manager made that decision. Mm -hmm. Right, seven months ago. Yeah. Which I agree with Bob's comment that that would have preferably been a policy decision that came to us, mm -hmm. but recognizing that that was already a decision that was made when you were took your position, so there was not much we could do. But that being I, said, I, I do recognize the reason for the deviance. And I like your legal argument because I think that's a very strong one, which is their existing customer. 
Yeah. And we're forcing that to happen as opposed to a, a choice type thing. We might want to clarify that in the policy maybe a little bit mm -hmm. later just to make sure because that might also be something the community, particularly in an area like this that does have disasters from time to time, may want to have some clarity on as well. So I, I like that legal argument a lot. It's right and, and so that we're not being viewed as setting precedent with this, um, and that something like this does come back to the board or that there's policy change for it so that we're not being viewed as, oh, well, you're gonna do work near my house? Yeah, you're gonna do all the rest of this for me also. Yeah. No, we shouldn't should be yeah. in that yeah. uh, view. So uh, good points. Yeah. Okay. Do we have any comments from the public on this one? <laughs> Seeing none. Um, I move that the board authorize the interim general manager to approve contract change orders 10 and 11 for payment to Anderson Pacific Engineering Construction Incorporated for the Alta Via pipeline replacement in the sum of $123,667, increasing the not to exceed contract amount from $2,569,979 to $2,698,000. Seconded. Okay. President Hill. Yes. Director, excuse me, Vice President Ackman. Yes. Director Falls. Yes. Director Smalley. Yes. Motion passing. Okay, the next item on new business is outreach contract renewal, Miller Maxfield. Staff, give us our. Thank you, President. So, uh, Carly will present this item to you. Thank you. Thank you. So, as mentioned, this is for an amended and reinstated agreement with Miller Maxfield, who's currently the outreach consultant for the district. Uh, for some background, we did go out to a request for a proposal process or a competitive bid in June of 2022 um, and awarded the contract to Miller Maxfield in July of 2022. Since their contract award, we have increased our social media presence, became more consistent with our monthly newsletters, as well as completed some special outreach projects, such as the, uh, the system flushing, our Prop 218 hiring outreach, as well as the confidence or consumer confidence report. Overall, the, the outreach has increased for the districts, and I would say the quality has also increased. Mm -hmm. Uh, staff turnover resulted in their contract expiring before we could renew it. Uh, it's, it, it expired in about, uh, sorry, it expired. Put this over here. <laughs> it expired in July of 2023 prior to the renewal. And in attachment A, there's their updated scope and fees, uh, which serves for the remainder of 2024 through March of 2026. Staff is recommended reinstatement of their contract based on the selection through a competitive, competitive bidding process less than two years ago, and their updated scope and fees in a not to exceed amount of $150,000. Uh, staff is prepared to answer questions. I did want to just sum up if I could, and that's clearly I kind of look at this as a little bit of housekeeping. Normally, if we go through a competitive process and review RFPs, I would then have a professional service agreement for three years with maybe an option to extend another two if we like what we're the service we're getting. Um, somewhere in that process, I mean, we let the contract expire rather than renewing it. And this is just a case of saying, let's, you know, we have gone through a competitive process. There's no reason to reinvent the wheel there and, and move this along. And uh, we like the service we're getting. and. <coughs> That's pretty much it. Any comments from the public? My name is Karen Brown, North of Boulder Creek, and I feel that this is not a good practical use of our money. They're, they promised that they're going to post something once a month. And we have the Valley Women's Club who post. We have the Friends of San Lorenzo Valley who post. You're getting the PR you need. To spend $150,000 to get a post every month out of this organization is outrageous. 
This is not a good bang for your buck. You'd be better off having somebody on staff who is able to inform the public through <coughs> the websites instead of hiring these people. And it says from, they started out at 55,000. They wanted to go up to 150,000 for these two years, up to $205,000 is where they want to go. And that is just too much for PR, where you can fill out Facebook. You can inform the public as to what's going on instead of again hiring a consultant. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Any comments from the board? Bob? I just want to make sure I'm clear on a couple of things. Are there any outstanding invoices or invoices that we expect to receive for um, up to April 1st, which I guess is the uh, start date on their contract? I believe so. We've recently paid a, an invoice through this, but there's probably some amount of time that they worked in between this contract renewal and so working, we're working basically for free or not under contract. Mm -hmm. Not in the contract. Uh, how much is that? I don't have the numbers in front of me, but we can we can pull that for you. I, I mean, again, I'm want to make sure I understand the numbers here. Um, so we're looking then at 150,000 less some amount prior to April 1st, because this would be for invoicing effective earlier this month, right? Um, plus whatever's left over going forward for two years. So, you know, there's two roles that our community plays. One is as customers and one is as owners. All of our um, communication to the, to the community is um, in a cell mode as if we're a private company. It's happy talk mostly, it's information about the outages, which is that part is important. But a lot of it is about, oh, we're doing all these great things. And we're not really educating our community in the roles as owners. I have a real problem with spending this amount of money on the heels of a rate increase that just happened, that had this been before the board, prior to that rate increase vote, I think there might've been a, a lot more community angst over this kind of money being spent, um, particularly given that it's a significant increase on a per yearly basis over what they had been doing. Um, you know, this just sends such a bad message into the community that, hey, as soon as we have your money, we're now going to start spending things. This is the poster boy for why I was saying we needed to have a clear understanding of how that rate increase was going to be spent rather than just saying, well, you know, trust us, we'll spend it, you know, we'll spend it how we want to. Um, I don't think anybody that didn't vote against it had in mind that we are going to spend this kind of money on PR effectively when you start talking about the one line in there about operating costs. Um, I, I just, I, you know, we don't miss an opportunity to miss an opportunity. And uh, th this to me, I, I just couldn't believe that we had this coming in front of us right now. So needless to say, uh, plus I'm not that great a fan of Miller Maxfield's work. I never have been. Um, it, were they involved in the flyer, by the way, that went out for the community? Which flyer? They brought 218. They were. That was such a poor piece of work in terms of communicating to the, the reality of the situation. Um, and in fact, very misleading information in there. I, I just can't justify spending that kind of money on a, on a firm that produced that effort that was so bad. So, okay, but I know it's going to pass and there it is. Okay, so I would comment. Bob, that public relations agencies, the material that they use to talk to the public with comes from their clients. And they don't make things up. They put out what the client asks them to put out. So um, I think they're very capable of putting out any message that we ask them to, but 
the things that you objected to were not things that they believe they made up out of whole cloth. They are things that uh, they were requested to uh, add in and materials that were reviewed uh, at some level by staff. And so uh, you know, the PR agencies don't make this stuff up. They, they do what their clients ask them to. So. So um, if I could clarify here, the language is, the language here says for fiscal year 24 through 26. So that means that this contract would expire in June 2026 or? March, March. March. it's March. April 1st to March. It, the description isn't quite right. It's okay. really April 1st to March 31st. Okay. Two, so two years effective, plus arrears. April 1st to March 31st of 2026. Okay, so got it. Um, so we're looking at, what would this be? Another $75,000 a year for each year of PR services. And we've, we paid for the $55,000 covered what period of time again for PR services? A year. A year. So we're, we're looking at what is roughly a $20,000 increase in PR costs year over year for the two years of the contract that are being proposed here. Um, okay. And we don't have anyone on staff whose job it is to do PR, right? And if we had a full-time staff position to do communications, we'd probably pay them with benefits somewhere in the neighborhood of $100,000 a year because benefits are 50% of the cost of the employee. So if you're paying them 50 grand for PR, which is about an entry-level PR person salary, you're paying about 100,000 with uh, benefits. So we're paying $75,000 for PR services rather than hire a full-time staff person to do this. Would that be an accurate way of looking at this, or is that? Yes, City of Salinas is my former employer. I sat in the same office and we had a staff. They had a staff, a full-time person that did PR, outreach, the whole thing. Um, right. And in our case, yeah, sure. When you look at the fully loaded rate of somebody, um, it would be over 100,000 a year. Okay. Thank you, I'm comfortable with this contract. Mm -hmm. I don't have any more, so I'll move uh, the contract to direct the interim general manager to enter an amended and restated agreement with Miller Maxfield, increasing the not to exceed amount by $150,000 as explained here for outreach services uh, in the April to March 31st timeframe. Yes, sorry, so, so, so sorry. I will stop there and allow Jeff to Second. go to the public. I think we need to go to oh, public. Yeah. Yeah. public comments on this. I think we had public comments, did we? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah we did yes, have we did. public comments. Yeah, we yes. did. We did. So, yes, we did. Um, so I will second that. Uh, President Hill. Yes. Vice President Ackman. Yes. Director Falls. No. Director Smalley. Yes. Motion passes. Okay, the next item is July 2024 Board of Directors meeting, discussion and possible action by the board regarding the possible scheduling of a July 2024 Board of Directors meeting. Uh, this boils down to the fact that uh, the first uh, Thursday of the month falls on 4th of July, and so we don't really want to have a meeting on 4th of July. So, staff, comments? Uh, I think staff's preference was to go, we recommend that we go with the third, uh, third Thursday. Thursday of July. I know I'll be on vacation the first part of July, so um, if that's, that was the idea. I think we need the meeting, probably we'll have business to take care of. Mm -hmm. um, but at least for now, the schedule. Comments from the public? Comments from the board? Well, I would like to propose the second Thursday of July, which would be the 11th. I, I have a standing commitment typically on the third Thursday. Tonight was an unusual night. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I can't make the 11th. That would be a, a conflict for me. So we could do it another day, mm -hmm. uh, a Wednesday perhaps. But... Um, you know, at this point, I'm, uh, 
you know, the schedule is a schedule. We used to have meetings on the first and third. That was the first and third Thursdays. We should just hold to Do you want that. to have it on the 4th of July? You, you'd like to have our we meeting in July on the 4th of July? I mean, I would, but I know that that would not be a good thing for everybody else. But the 18th, the 18th is fine. If you can't make it, oh, well. The eight, we have these things. We had these things scheduled on first and third Thursdays. I don't think it is a good policy for the board to make special exceptions for board members. Would you make an exception for me? Of course not. I'm proposing another date. If the board chooses to schedule the meeting on the 18th, and that passes with a majority of the board vote, that's what we can do. But I'm within my rights as a board member to propose another date that can be considered and either approved or discarded. Sure. Mark, do you have any comment? I am fine with a meeting on the third Thursday as staff has proposed. No comments from the public or? Okay. So I move that the point point or, order do we need public, we need public comment. I did ask for public yeah. comment. Sorry. Yes, thank you. Okay. Uh, I move that the board uh Schedule a special board of directors meeting on July 18th, 2024, and not hold a meeting on July 4th, 2024. I'll second that. President Hill? Yes. Vice President Ackman? Abstain. <laughs> Director Falls? Yes. Director Smalley? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. I have a comment there from the public. Um, I do um, want to speak to an item on the consent calendar. So, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. I do want to speak to an item on the consent calendar. I was hoping to get here in time between closed session and this time. Um, I want to address one of the items on the consent calendar. Just a moment. I, I mean, I would, uh, that is, I'm pretty sure that she wants to address the ones I was, one of the ones I was going to pull from the consent. Okay. okay. I was going to pull the hazardous tree mitigation and the um, uh, Four Springs SRF application. Okay. So let me just count that here. Hazardous tree and forest springs. Okay, so we will go to the hazardous tree mitigation first. Does staff wish to? I'm sorry, um, can we approve the rest of the consent agenda before that, please? Yes, we can do that. Yes. No further comments? Do we know what items we're pulling from the consent agenda? Because I'm I'm not clear what is being sorry, eleven A and eleven D. Okay. Yes. So yes. beyond that, and I, I think that we should ask the public, is it, is there any other item on the consent agenda that anyone else plans to speak on before we yes. pass the consent agenda, the rest of the consent agenda? I, I see no comments. Yeah, to clarify, I was a D. Okay. So, so we're going to pull 11 A and, a, a and D and approve the rest of the consent agenda. A, a and D we pull and the rest of the we pull. Great. Okay, I move the consent agenda for items B, C, and E. Second. Okay. President Hill? Yes. Vice President Ackman? Yes. Director Falls? Yes. Director Smalley? Yes. Okay. Would staff like to present us with the rest? Oh, I, I just have a question about the hazardous tree mitigation. Oh, so I'll, I'll, I'll cut it short. <laughs> Was that bid? It cannot be bid if we go with the California conservation. It can. Well, 
So help so, me help me through that just for future reference because I'm sure we might be using them again. Right. So if we go out to bid, they can't bid. That's correct, and they no longer are able to take the work. So if an agency goes out to bid for a project, the CCCs are no longer able to work on the project. It disqualifies them. Interesting. Yeah. When did that happen? That's a good question. I don't know. That's what we were told their policy very curious. was. <laughs> that is a very situation. curious situation. Yeah. I, I don't understand that. Okay. Um, I appreciate that for background, though. That'll help me uh, going forward. Thanks. Okay. Do we have any other questions regarding the hazardous tree mitigation issue. Okay. Is it public? Do we need to go out? Does the public have any issues on that? Yes. <laughs> Karen Brown, North of Boulder Creek. At the last meeting on 3-7-2024, this PV pipe contract was already addressed and it came into at $99 thousand dollars and at that time the the corps of engineers was going to take out all these trees so in a couple of months all that has changed since the initial contract was approved by all of you back at the meeting on 3-7-2024 and at that time we had the corps of engineers were going to do the trees this other group was going to put in the pipe I don't recall us having the Corps of Engineers doing anything. Let me just open. Um, the, not the Corps of Engineers, but the Civil Conservatory, the people that are supposed to be removing the, the trees. It may have been California discussed, but this, we may not have had a contract in front of us to approve. And so that's why this was on the consent agenda initially, was that we just had to go through the process now of actually approving the, the contract that had been discussed previously. Uh, and it okay. doesn't include removing the trees now. Even though the contract prior to that did talk about hiring this group that was going to volunteer and remove the trees, there was not a contract before. I don't think so I can clarify that was for the All environmental right. consultant for the permitting of the work, it was a different contract. Okay, I keep track. So, um, I'll move the uh, board interim general manager to enter into an agreement with the California Conservation Corps for uh, hazardous tree mitigation for the P-Vine pipeline replacement project. Second. President Hill? Yes. Vice President Ackman? Yes. Director Pulse? Yes. Director Smalley? Yes. Okay, item D, the State Revolving Fund Application for Forest Springs. Do we have, Thank you, so can we get a, a description of that first from staff? Yes, sir. Sure. Go ahead, Carter. So this is an application for the State Revolving Fund Program of for Forest Springs for phase two planning of the consolidation project. So this is really looking at the Forest Springs system to construct laterals and complete the uh, tank up or install a tank as well as create or install and upgrade anything that Forest Springs needs to bring them online for consolidation. So we are asking the state for money That's for right. that. This is our, our this is about our request to the state to pay for that. That's right. Okay. Do we have any comments from the public excuse, on that? Excuse me. Well, so I'm a little confused. Sorry. Um are we asking for funds just for the design and um, engineering phase. That's correct. The uh, planning application is only looking at design. Okay, and do and we and do we have a consultant in place already? We do not. So we talk here about this eligible for a maximum grant up to sixty k per connection. What is it we're expecting to get? Are we expecting to get seven point seven million, or are we expecting to get something less than that? And that's to be determined by the state. That's what we're eligible for is sixty thousand per connection. But that would be all the way through. That would, that'd be all the way through construction. That's correct. So that'd be the whole McGillan. Do we think seven point seven million is enough? I mean, I, I I'd have to see the movie. I'm not sure I believe that. Um, what costs are we incurring right now, if any, in the consolidation efforts? The district isn't 
incurring any costs other than staff time. Uh, small amount of staff time. Well, negotiating consolidation agreement or pre-consolidation agreement, whatever the time is. But as of right now, and going forward, once we get this grant, is that in, is the intention of that grant that it will cover 100% of the design and engineering expenses? It will likely cover all the design and engineering, but once we get to construction, that might be another case. So depending on what the funding differences are, that will come back to the, the actual mutual. Do, do we have, do we think we have a clear understanding with Forest Springs that whatever money falls short after the grant, they're responsible for and that they have to put in place a funding mechanism. And the reason I'm asking that is because a long time ago when we started this, I said, I absolutely want to support Four Springs and Brack and Bray, but the existing customer base cannot be expected to put their money into it without, I think, broad community consent on that if they chose to do so. But as of right now, I haven't heard that. So what do we think? Or is that part of the pre-consolidation agreements that we have in place and are well, they ready to is, sign? Is it, I mean, it's probably jumping ahead of ourselves a little bit because we haven't, we haven't got to that phase when we take it. If, if we got this grant and then we have the designs and then we see how much it's going to cost and we have an engineer's estimate and we know where the chips are going to land, um, we would have another agreement in place at that time, either an amended consolidation agreement or at that point I would expect that it's going to take them that's kind of like the end of the line which everything should be done by then and it could be the full consolidation agreement and yes all of that stuff would have to be spelled out which is why I'm dividing this up into chunks so I can move it along it's just focus on that first leg of the work and when we get there we'll have an agreement etc and when we know all the costs, but we don't know right now. Right now we're saying we would like to apply for this money and be, we want to open our mitt and catch a ball. But it could be 7.7 .7 million. Mm -hmm. But we don't know yet. And we don't know what it's going to cost. We don't know exactly how much it's going to pay for. It could substantially, it could complete the project, but we don't know that. But what we're asking for, I mean, this is just saying we want to apply for this money. Mm -hmm. So it's possible that the state could come back and say, hey, we think it's going to cost you $150,000 to do the design. Here's $150,000. Come back, you know, when you have a design or something like that. Is that a possibility that they could do that? As that's opposed to saying, what it sounds like. As opposed to saying, here's the entire, you know, 7.7 .7 million, 60 to, uh, K That's times, possible because they like things shovel ready. But, I, you know, I, I don't want to, for instance, it could be a thing where they say, yes, well, will award this much, but it still tees us up for now we have more, we're more advanced and we're teed up for better, more grant money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So well, it's I'm, always, I mean, it's, I, you know, in this case, it's, it seems like a, well, I mean, I would say it's certainly something we would want to pursue. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I mean, again, I, I definitely want to see if there's a way to be able to bring the, those communities into the, into the district. Um, okay, well, I appreciate the background on that. It, it's it's helpful. Um, the, the only concern I have about getting a big slug of money in is that does that 60K go up every year and with inflation or is it a statutory fixed amount and that that's it? it it's, it's a fixed amount. However, the state can approve up to 80,000 per connection in special cases. Yeah. So there's potential for more funding, but there's the potential for less funding. Yeah, I, 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 it's just from the point of view of how rapidly costs are, are mm -hmm. going up. When you get that big amount of money, and if you don't do something with it, like right now, you lost 15% next year and another 15% the year after, et cetera. So, um, yeah. It is a problem with grants, for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but and the, and this, we're doing pretty good with the grant money right now. I mean, we did get the million dollars yeah. congressionally yeah. Just, just directed spending from Panetta. So, mm -hmm. but we need to talk about where that goes to, but um, another day. Okay, thanks. Appreciate it. I thought we hear from the public and then. Yes. I mean, the words are less common, but um, the reason why I wanted it pulled from the agenda is that I didn't, I 
I'm in full support of this. I think Carly has done a wonderful job in trying to get this pulled together. Um, my issue is that it um, references um, Brack and Bray as phase two, and we have not had um, any working meetings since the interim manager has taken um, responsibility of the district. And uh, we have not been a part of any of this, and this does have um, the water storage, but um, we are um, lacking any insight to what the phasing is of this. And so I just wanted it to be noted um, just because it references the phase two and the, um, the be it resolved. And in the um, background, it speaks to Brack and Bray, and it's probably a typo, but um, that we are not being represented in this. Um, the district has been meeting um, frequently with Four Springs and not Brack and Bray. And so I just want it clear um, that we're not in agreement that we're in phase two. There's been no discussions and, and the um, both in this and in the engineer's report, it indicates that we're actively working through a pre-consolidation agreement. And that's impossible for Brack and Bray at this point because we don't have all the information to even get to a negotiation point. So I just want that reflected. So I don't know if that's a correction that needs to happen. Um, I'm sure they were trying to get this done. I support this, um, but I just wanted to, to reflect um, that Brack and Bray um, is not aware that we're in phase two. Um, we're not aware of what phase we're in, but I wanted that to be reflected um, adequately. Thank you. Thank you. Bob, I, I do have a couple of further questions. So when we talk about the money in here, we do reference the um, 3.2 million we received before. That's a while ago now. So that keeps eating away. And also the short of 1 million. So what was that 1 million specifically allotted for? The short of 1 million? Yeah, the 959 to Panetta on the 19th Congressional right. District Community Project. So that was a, a earmark that we received from Panetta. And, and what was it specifically? It's specifically for the tanks. The storage tanks just pick up a little. It's for the storage tanks at Forest okay. Springs and for Brack and Bray. Okay, so it's specific for them, yes. not a general purpose uh, grant to no, the community. that's only for okay. the tanks. Excellent. Um, I, I, I don't necessarily see it in here, but I know that we may apply for additional assistance, but I, again, is everybody clear that this resolution doesn't mean we're committing any funds at this point in time if we can't see our way to completing the project. Because when we talk about money, it makes it sound like, well, we're going to spend this money. And it's like, well, I'm not exactly sure what we're spending on. Well, we, we haven't gotten no grant award. We want to apply to get money, and it's a planning grant. Well, so we can design it and figure out how much it's going to cost. Right. It could just be that we could be that we just get money to do the engineering design. Right. And mm -hmm. and I'm reading the memo. Funds are requested for. Hydraulic can else environmental review design construction documents. I, I'm reading the resolution because that's the legally binding uh, document. Okay. Um, and I, we do reference the money in there in, in a way that makes it sound like we're ready to go. And I, I want to make sure that, that that's the case. <laughs> And, and the 3.2 million, what was that for again exactly? Was that for specifically consolidating both Bracken Bray and Forest Springs, not That's just correct. one? It's, we considered it phase one, which is the mains that run. Yeah, there. it's the no, backbone. Yeah. It's the 12 inch pipe that ties in at Boulder Brook, goes up Highway 236, goes over to West Park, goes up West Park to the pump station, and then goes from the pump station to the bottom of Hazel Bray. And then goes up acorn to the tanks. Okay, so uh, uh, I, I'm confused by that because, especially with the response from from Nicole, uh, it uh, that wasn't my understanding necessarily of what phase one was going to be, and maybe we're getting into I, the situation I, I, where we are short funds. Are we are we delving into something here that's beyond we, what this memo? But it's um, the resolution that's the issue for me, not the memo. The resolution is the legally binding language I, that we're passing. I, I understand. The memo is irrelevant. Um, the, the 
but the recommended motion is assigning the interim general manager as the authorized representative. To, to well, it also says it, doesn't. it also says approving the required state of California Water Resources Control Board authorized representative resolution. But I believe that only is authorizing him again. Exactly. Yes. So, so we aren't really. I could. It's it's just a standard. It's you can't. Some grants allow us to go apply, and then they want the required resolution later. In this case, they want it up front, so we can't even apply. Basically, we're asking for the required resolution, and that's in the language at the very bottom of the resolution. Okay. So, can, so can, this, can we this can resolution? we do this? Uh, we can. I can shut it down here now, but. I think we need to have a deeper dive into this at a board level on where we are with Bracken Bray and Forest Springs, because I'm not exactly sure where that is. And I think it might be helpful to get up to speed in that, particularly when I, I'm concerned that we're not all on the same page yet in terms of how we get Forest Springs and Bracken Bray into the, into the system. That's that would be my request, Jeff. That we bring something like that to the to the board. For this is a big deal for me in terms of consolidating our neighbors that have been adversely affected by uh, the CCU fire, and I, I just feel like we've been too distant from it to be able to get a good handle of where we're at. Okay, I support that request for a future board meeting. Yep. Mm -hmm. okay. and, we, and we can go ahead and vote on this tonight. Yeah, because yes. all this is doing is designating him as the guy to, to talk to the, like, right. to the state. Right. So, okay. Okay. Do we need... So, no. uh, I'd like to... So do we have a motion? Oh, yeah, we've got one. Right. Um, the board adopts... I recommend the board adopt the resolution assigning the interim general manager as the authorized representative for the state of California Water Resources Control Board's Clean Water State Revolving Fund uh, planning application and approving the required state of California Water Resources Control Board authorized representative resolution, which must accompany the, um, the state's planning application. Second. Second. President Hill. Yes. Vice President Ackman. Yes. Director Fulz. Yes. Director Smalley. Yes. Motion passes. Okay. Do we have any issues that we have to go over on department quarterly status reports? Well, I have questions. I don't know if they're issues. Okay, well, I could. Be uh, I could. I, I think that we're going to let questions for um, engineering and environmental. Um, Heather, are you still on? Yes, I am. Are you going to present anything for finance? Um, if not necessarily, I was. I was here to respond to questions. Okay. So we can do one or two things then as um, I have, I was going to present my report, but okay. um, what? that's fine. We can also, I can present my report and then you can have questions for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> that be the... Sure. Uh, yes. Whatever. Okay. Okay. So I will go ahead and do mine then. Um, start out with, um, Past quarter activities, uh, we started flushing our lines in March. We hope to be done in May, late May. As far as we know, we haven't heard anything, um, any reports of complaints, just people inquiring how long it's going to take. Um, of course, accomplishment uh, past quarter is the rate study. Um, we approved the rates and we're also still working on that. I mean, there's still some outreach. We just retooled the bill and how the bill looks and how it's going to go out to the public, but also that we're making sure we're doing outreach around that mm -hmm. um, because people are going to get the new bills. Apparently, there was some misunderstanding. Maybe it's some misunderstanding with rates were approved in March, but they go in effect in April. We'll answer those questions. Um, 
We'll also be working on the wholesale intertie rates. Now that we have a contract with Raptelis, we'll finish that up and maybe be able to address some of these special case scenarios too, um, where it's maybe not wholesale, where they're paying taxes or not paying property taxes, that we look at those different rates. Um, compensation study was started in February, um, kickoff meeting in March. And we just finished gathering all the information on comparable agencies, um, comparables for the salary study and also all the information, all the job descriptions, et cetera. And we're scheduling the process of scheduling our first meeting um, with the working group. Um, budget review and reconciliation. We did go through and look at all the capital improvement projects and all the funding sources. And from that, we're able to prioritize our capital improvement projects. And we have a working list of the priority projects right now, at least the top five to seven that we're trying to push forward. Um, and in terms of CIP advancement, um, we are focused on those core projects, looking, making sure that we're meeting our milestones because a lot of times if there's grant funding that we're making sure that we're checking the boxes there. And as I mentioned before, um, just working on having established templates and being efficient about how we're moving these projects along. Um, I wanted to add Big Basin Water Company. Um, I have been in touch with the receivership. Um, they did receive some grant money from the county. Their county got them state money, uh, about $900,000. So they have a little bit of money now to start going forward with doing some studies, which is good for us. Um, so I've been in communication with them. I will come back to you with some of this again, but I, I can at least say now that because they have some money, um, we might want to start looking at that situation again and how we can how we can participate. And I know that there's been some email chatter on that, but I don't want to go into that now because this is past quarter activities, but we will revisit that. Um, Brackenbrae and Forest Springs, as we noted, both mutuals have received um, draft pre-consolidation terms, and we started with terms so that we could work through those before we put together formal agreements. But now, um, according to legal, we can have legal start drafting up the actual consolidation agreements. Um, we are looking at, obviously, the grant money fell short of doing the entire project. So we're looking at just one section of the project that we can build with combination of district funds and um, funds from the grant to finish out at least that portion of it. And it'd be the first Trump feeding, heading up towards both mutual. Um, let's see if I got everything here. We are, and we also just, as you saw, we just completed a state revolving grant fund and received also the nearly million dollars from Panetta for congressionally just, um, directed spending. So also on the note of emergency planning, I was able to participate in a supply chain management situation exercise. And the idea was if you had a major, major disaster and you had closed arteries, major transportation arteries closed, not only down here, but in the Bay Area. And how do you move goods and services around? And I thought it was a good mental exercise. And the water district is kind of interesting. If a grocery store needs to rely on public infrastructure to get their goods and services so that they could supply them to the community, we have an interesting bit here as if uh, in order, if we lost power here, well, power means trucking fuel up to these remote locations to run the generators. So that relies on the roads. So it relies on infrastructure. And I pointed this out in the meeting and this was held at the county office, the emergency services office. Um, and I thought it was good to just have that discussion and also the water managers have all 
agreed to get together and, and discuss this in more detail, how we would react. If we needed to assist somebody else or somebody else needed to assist us, what if that, you know, what if the proverbial, you know what, hits the fan, what are we gonna do? How are we gonna react and what would we do? So we wanna walk through that scenario amongst the local water manager agencies. Um, so look ahead for next quarter rates, of course, we're still, um, like I said, we're assimilating that and, you know, we haven't, of course, people haven't got their bills yet. So there will be some reaction to that and probably more outreach. Um, we do want to assess our connection fees as well as the wholesale intertie fees. Um, Brackenbrand, Forest Springs, we want to have those pre-consolidation agreements executed. Um, have the plan sets finalized so we can get bids and get get construction work going and also continue efforts to keep securing more money. Um, CIPs, really it comes down to assessing staffing needs um, and maintain the timelines for these priority projects to make sure we're not losing any money because um, we have FEMA deadlines and we have grant deadlines. Conjunctive use, um, looking at um, to start a comprehensive analysis of a seasonal water balance. It's, I think you have to get somewhat granular on this and start looking at people's needs and wants um, and keep those discussions going. In fact, I said, initiate discussions. Those have already been initiated and we have, in fact, we have another meeting next week about it. So with the Groundwater Sustainability Agency. Um, and the compensation study to say looking ahead as we're still anticipating to be done in um, June of 2024. Um, staffing, um, introduced again, Jen Torres um, is going to be the new district secretary, is the new district secretary. Um, and Holly has been working, training her, and we're I'm very grateful that we were able to find somebody and have the chance to have overlap, which is very important. And it's often rare in a public setting to get that opportunity. Um, not as fortunate with the finance manager. Um, we had, if I had given this report at the beginning of April, we had some people and we were looking at maybe being able to interview them, but um, they're a hot commodity and it's pretty hard to uh, attract that talent, but we're working on it. So I'll leave you with that. And if you have any questions for any of those, Heather's online, Carly, Garrett, or myself. Well, um, on, the, on the rate increase taking effect. So the rate increase went into effect on March 1st, correct? So it'll be for five years. So March 1st, 2024 to March to February 20. 8th, 2029, is that how that works? I think it ends on the um, the calendar year or the fiscal year before, I'd have to check. Oh, okay, so not quite five years then. And yeah, that. it's actually yeah. a little shy of five years. Okay, all right. And then the bills will reflect, be reflective of the rate because it's in arrears, so it'll reflect that on April. In April, yeah. April billing for March. Yeah. I think there had already been some chatter on Facebook yes. about this. Right? There is yeah. a, a misunderstanding that I'll be clearing up. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Great. Uh, let's see. Was there other... got a, I've got no, a question on it. the engineering aspects. Um, I see that we're very close to closing out the Fall Creek Fish Ladder project. Um, <laughs> Finally. Uh, prior to uh, Brian and Garrett coming on board, we had an agreement that we were going to uh, replace that uh, chain link fence uh, uh, that, uh, Carly, I think you got designed for. Uh, I want to make sure that that's still on, the, on somebody's radar to get that constructed. Is that new? Yeah, it is. Oh, okay. So All the right. chain link fence has been canceled from the contractor's scope of work. And district staff has got pricing for wrought iron fencing. Okay. All right. Good. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, question on the emergency um, planning activities. Um, I, 
I say this not because I'm I'm convinced that it's a realistic alternative, but because I know that when we were having conversations about um, the railroad, there there the Warren Camp Railroad, and um, there was conversation about could could water trains in the event of major <laughs> fires be a useful tool for you know fighting fires? I don't believe that that's true. But I would love for us to have an answer to that because the question got asked a few times and got written about in a couple of publications. And I don't think that that's really a, a response to a major fire, but I don't really know how to answer that without seeming dismissive to the idea. So anyhow, I just put that out there when we're when we're having when we're doing emergency response planning, it would also be nice to have some kind of an FAQ, especially for board members, where we could kind of answer questions like, oh, well, that's possible or oh, you know, that's mm. not realistic. Um, because I don't know what the answer would be to that. There was one other item. Um, did y'all talk about uh, cyber? Um, security or cyber terrorism or anything like that in terms Wait, of one of the this, this wasn't it didn't go into the but i and the point is is you know emergency planning it's like if you're not if you don't start doing this stuff and thinking about it and being prepared you're not prepared at all yeah. and you don't have a plan then you're caught with your you know you're caught red-handed or whatever you can't get this kind of work or do you know respond correctly? So I mean, I know I've re reviewed our internal one, but I thought this was good to look at it from a regional standpoint. But cybersecurity would be another one for sure. I believe there was a documented uh, cyber attack on a larger water system by Russia um, recently here. I think it was in Texas. Yeah, cyber I, I attack on BTA here yeah. in the Bay Area. So too, I mean, so. it is. I mean. We may not be on their radar because of our size, but they may also put us on their radar because of our size, and maybe they feel it's a softer target. Mm -hmm. Well, and copycats learn from what, sure, you of know. Course. Yeah. I do have other questions on other reports if we're ready to move on. We're done with the, uh, we're done with the um, regional manager's report. Comments okay. from the public? <laughs> okay. Uh, on the engineer's report. Yes. Um, is there a is there a tank already up on the Redwood Park pipeline project? Is there a tank up? No. Yeah. Is there a tank going up? Uh, so we have an RFP that we put out for design. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is so it wasn't on your list here. So I wasn't yeah. Not sure. Including waiting design. Um, and the big one, of course, um, you know, Bob Lewis has been waiting a long time for the Felton Heights tank. Oh, yeah. Uh, close to 15 years at this point. That's um, right. Bob, could you speak up, please? Sorry, getting toward the end of the day, and I've been talking all day, too. Um, the Felton Heights tank. Yes. So that's included in the RFP for design. We have a site survey completed. And we executed a contract for the geotechnical engineer to update his report. We had contemplated uh, building the tank on, I guess, the north side of the dirt road. And uh, we've changed the location to the south side of the dirt road. So we're getting the geotechnical report updated for the actual location now. And when would that be ready? It will be ready four weeks from April. 22nd. Cool. Yeah. Make sure you include it in our next report. report. Progress. I mean, I, I got to send Bob an email. Um, okay. Uh, do we want to keep going or because um, I have other questions on other reports? So um, please. Okay. Yes. Go ahead. Um, I was going to ask about infrastructure grants, whether we, how much we have in the hopper. That is, if I look at this as sort of a, you know, you put a bunch in and you put a funnel in and at the end of it, you close on some amount. I'd like to know what the number is up top. How much money do we have right now that we're pursuing in grants? So the next big infrastructure grant will be another water smart grant for AMI meter infrastructure. There's two different funding types. There's a smaller grant and then there's a larger grant. And depending on how quickly we can complete the work, because it's a pretty short time frame. It, it's going to change which one we pursue. Could we hire um, third-party contractors? I know Rick had talked about this 
a summer a summer crew basically that all they do is come in and put in meters right and that's the route we'd probably go if we end up going after all the meters in our system that are remaining yeah and that's a two million dollar grant so okay well i mean i let's let's not um let's not scale our expectations down too fast outside of that uh, any other big ones that are in the yes. pipeline so the other thing we're pursuing which was one of the consent items is a local hazard mitigation plan which then opens us up to cal oes funding in the future so once we get through that we can pursue a lot more infrastructure related projects through cal oes um, so that'll open us up to some more grant funding and then otherwise we're keeping our eyes out for other things that are coming down the chute but um, there's nothing else that we're pursuing outside of the water spot at this point point. and are we seeing grant funding continue to be fairly robust that is it's not drying up in, in light of the budget issues at the state level for example yes so the state it seems like it has slowed down um, but as far as the federal government, it seems like they've been announcing more money for infrastructure, particularly water infrastructure. So I'm imagining we'll be, start seeing that funded through into the state and yeah. then through this grant. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, keep the funnel as full as possible. And how much are we paying our, our grant person every year now about? I think she still has a contract from a few years ago, and it was about, a ten, or I don't think it was more than $30,000 yeah. at that point. So she still has money well, in her contract. Really? Paid her money back. Wow! Yeah, no, we've we've yeah the, the ROI in that has been uh, has been phenomenal. I have to say, um, on the conjunctive use, um, uh, just to recap a little bit. We were going to go through a, um, um, a mit mitigated negative declaration. Santa Cruz City of Santa Cruz Water Department effectively objected, uh, and so we were forced to go into an EIR in order to not be sued um where are we with that eir right uh, so do you want to speak to this friend <laughs> yeah um like i said in the report is we're starting kind of looking taking a fresh look at this between you have new leadership on both sides yeah. so we and then, want to look at that and let's okay. see where we are with it okay well it's always been my position that there was nothing in their objections that couldn't have been resolved with good faith negotiations between the parties if they're really serious about fish and not politics. Mm -hmm. And so I'm really hopeful here that the new brooms will sweep clean because we're wasting a ton of money and time that we're not protecting our fish by dragging this out through a full EIR process. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess then uh, it sounds like the, the new brooms hopefully will sweep clean with respect to Loch Lomond feasibility. I think we need numbers from the Santa Cruz Water Department before we spend uh, any time or effort on that, because you can't do a trade-off between do we do our own infrastructure, do we buy wholesale water without numbers from them? Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't. It doesn't make any sense. Um, and uh, that's that's if we're serious about continuing to pursue Loch Lomond. Uh, let's see. Um, I would like to potentially consider um, removing the water shortage stage one at some point. We've had a couple good years, and the year before that wasn't horrible. Um, I will say the district's rain gauge is in probably the driest place in the San Lorenzo <laughs> Valley. Um, when I look at all the numbers that do come in on Facebook, um, from my point of view, we should have a ring gauge up where our watershed is, not our district office, but that's just my opinion. Um, so I, I think at some point, if your water shortage isn't matching kind of where we're at, unless we're just going to tell the community, hey, we're going to be permanently stage one, period. Um, I think we need to be looking at, at removing that. Uh, Okay, let's see here. Scrolling, scrolling. Um, looking ahead to, I believe, the uh, submission to the county for the property tax roll is in August. Um, how much are we expecting to capture out of the uh, balance of accounts that are past due? Do we have any? view on what we're going to be going after through property taxes. Sorry, can you repeat the question? Um, so in, in lieu of pursuing the nonstop, you know, threat to turn off water, turn off water, that sort of thing, we are taking past due bills, and I forget what the name of the process is, but 
putting it through a process where it goes on to the county tax okay. roll. Goes on and the property tax. The pro yeah, and in the past, I think the number has been smaller than I would have expected due to timing related issues, perhaps. And I'm curious to know what amount of money we're gonna be going after in August, because I know it seems like it's a long ways away, but it's May, June, July. So we're three months from the deadline, I think. Heather, do we have a line item on that at all? I do not have a line item on in the status report. There is the customer service department summary that talks about the 30 plus days past due balance. And at this point, um, as of January 31st, we were at 418,000. Yeah, I, I, I get that. that, and I appreciate that number because I do track that fairly closely. What I'm curious about is how much of that we think we can get onto the property tax rolls. And if that isn't a task that's on somebody's radar right now, I don't think we have much time left to get, be, yeah. to get, to get that, because there's a process you have to go through to, yeah. to get it done. Um, so, and I, I would hate to see that day go by and, and uh, not be able to capture additional funds. The way it works is if you put it on the property tax roll, um, I think Lois would talk about teeter. Uh, we get the money up front basically and the county pursues it with interest, uh, which is more onerous than we charge, I might add. Mm -hmm. Okay, noted. Okay, I think that was the last item. Thank you. Okay. <sighs> Okay, written communication. We did receive a couple of letters which were forwarded to staff for response. Informational material, none. Any further comments from the public? Any further comments from the board? We are adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you.